Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to have a quick look at this thing. Now, I put a picture of this on Instagram the other day, and uh, basically it's just a miniature consuming unit there with some uh, couple of bits inside. This one is intended for use with uh, electric vehicle supply equipment, or what's usually wrongly described as electric vehicle charging. And you might use this where you've got an existing installation and a consumer unit, and for whatever reason you can't add it into the existing consumer unit, either because it's full or it's too old and doesn't have uh, RCBOs or whatever available for it, or it's just not convenient to use the existing consumer unit because it's uh, far away from where the charging thing is going. And obviously people don't want to have cables and whatever's trailed through the house. And uh, this one, say, comes as several separate parts rather than a whole thing. But let's have a quick look at this and see what's in it and how the bits inside actually connect together. Now this is what we've got here. And this is not sold as this assembled unit. This is actually three separate components. What we've basically got here is this assembly, which is, as the code there says, it's an NM206-63. And what you get is this metal box, the main switch here, two poles, and then these two are actually empty. And I've just put these two in appropriate to this particular thing we're going to be using at some later date. So as configured, it is just a switch and spaces for two items. So let's just have a look inside what we've got. Now, as a number of people seem surprised that the surge protection device doesn't need its own separate circuit breaker. And we'll also see how this particular one connects to the things inside. This is a Wilex one. You can also get Crabtree ones which work in a similar way. So uh, that's not the one we have here. Now, as supplied, I say it doesn't actually come with these two other objects here. So we'll just take the screws out of the bottom there. This has a pin style bus bar there, just with the uh, flat uh, blades there. A little bit of plastic for insulation. No uh, surprises there. And uh, these things just uh, say clip onto the bar here in the way that you would expect. And again, that's the RCBO there. So, main switch. The supply would come in at the top here. So, your neutral there and the line on this side. Just a standard two-pole isolator. Neutral comes out the bottom here, goes up to the bar on the right-hand side there, and you see it's just got the uh, other terminals there for up to three other items, so they can only actually get two into this one. This RCBO just comes with this flying lead. Let's pull that out the bottom. As you can see there, this is one of the compact ones. In theory, you could put a tall one in here, but obviously uh, height is quite restricted on this unit. And the other important thing about these is that the compact ones have a switched neutral. So when it's in off position, both the line and the neutral are disconnected. And that is required for uh, electric vehicle supply equipment. The tall ones are only a switched uh, line. They don't have a switch neutral. It's just continuously connected, so that would not be appropriate. And so this little piece of uh, bus bar just goes in the bottom to bring the line here across to up to two devices. Now, this is the surge protection device here. You can buy these separately, and it comes with the neutral and the earth connections in the box with it. And this actually just fits on in the same way that a circuit breaker or RCB or any other device would. It's just got the connection at the bottom for the live there. And that's where the bus bar pin goes in. This will also fit in the older balcony style because you've got the slot at the front here. So that's the bus bar with the little U shapes cut out of the top. So it fits in pretty much all of the things that they've made. And uh, in terms of fitting, say it just snaps onto the bar just as any other devices would. And then say you've got this thing here which just goes in the bottom. And this does not need its own separate circuit breaker. This is why it's designed to connect directly onto the bus bar. Some of these do from some manufacturers. Others, like this one, do not. So just check with the manufacturer's instructions on how they are supposed to be installed. And so this one, it's just a question of the bus bar goes in the bottom there. And then, of course, that will just be tightened up uh, with the appropriate torque screwdriver. Just use this uh, thing here just to temporarily secure it in position. So it's applying at the top, neutral comes out here to the bar here. This one is for the surge protection device, just goes in the top there. Neutral from the RCBO again just goes into this one here. And then for connection-wise for your circuit, it's just the line of neutral at the top here. 
protective conductors go over to the earth bar on the side here and then this one from the surge protection device will also go over to there as supply this is far too long because you can use it in the full size consumer unit where you would need a extra length but of course in this case we're just going to cut that down making it as short as possible it does have this little ferrule supplied with it so you can put that over the end to avoid strands being crumpled about inside the terminal so uh, pretty straightforward there you just knock out the top there to bring the incoming supply in and then say it's just a question of the outgoing supply here line neutral and the earth over on the left side there so the point of this is that if you've got an existing installation and they just want to have a charging facility put in this is ideal for that because it's just break into the existing tails bring those in the top you're adding the surge protection which is definitely going to be required for EV charging and then you've got your RCBO here with switch neutral to provide the outgoing circuit for that and although some people seem to think that uh, surge protection is optional the reality is that if you're going to be installing electric vehicle supply equipment the thing you're protecting isn't necessarily the supply equipment itself although those obviously are many hundreds of pounds and something you don't want to be destroyed what you're actually protecting is the car or vehicle that's going to be connected to it because on that type of system here the supply equipment is just switching the full mains voltage 230 volts ac and that's what goes into the vehicle so if there was some kind of transient or spike or whatever that went along there that's going to end up going into the vehicle could damage or destroy the actual charging unit which is inside the vehicle now i don't know how much those will cost to replace but it's certainly not going to be cheap or particularly convenient so that's why we need it on there so if people say oh well there's nothing on the installation that could be damaged well there is it's the electric vehicle itself so here are the instructions for that surge protection device this says the Wallex one the Crabtree one is very similar the only difference is that it doesn't have an actual bar at the bottom it has a concealed bar and has a plug-in tab on the back of all of the devices but essentially it is the same component there same company obviously making it and uh, basically it just needs to go onto the bar preferably as close to the main switch as possible and then you keep the other lead again as short as uh, possible as well it gives you all of the uh, uh, specifications and again the uh, size of cables and whatever to connect with it uh, this fits most of their consumer units the other thing to be aware of is it says here it is not suitable for dual RCD units and that's the ones where you've just got two RCDs and nothing else the reason being you don't want to supply this through an RCD it would need to be done as here so two RCDs there and then you've got a separate space here direct off of the main switch something about high integrity they like to call those for some reason but for things like this uh, little one here it's just a set uh, bus bar and in reality uh, most new ones should of course be all rcbos with just a single fixed bus bar anyhow so just a question of slotting it in in the first position there and as i already mentioned you do need to tighten up the screws both for this and the other devices to the appropriate torque using the appropriate tools just using this uh, mankel screwdriver just to temporarily secure it for the purposes of looking at it and uh, I say this does fit all of their units so in most cases if you've got a wilex or even a crabtree one that's sitting in situ already it's just a question of uh, slotting it into an appropriately empty space there so okay, that's the uh, pin style of bus bar that's the sort of more flexible or comb style which is what we've got with this one and then this is the balcony one which is a solid piece with a little u-shaped cutout it does fit all three so goes in either way so that's that, and uh, if you're wondering why it's a 40 amp, whereas most uh, EVSEs are only 7.2 kilowatts or around 32 amps, the reason being is that it's not desirable to run things at their maximum rating for extended periods. So if you put a 32 in there, yes, in theory it should be fine, but if you're charging up a vehicle, say for six hours or something, you don't really want it to be running at its maximum for the six hours, so hence uh, just moved up to the next rating there, which in this case is 40. Yeah, not a problem at all because you're going to be wiring it probably with six millimeter square conductors so again not a problem with a 40 amp device in most cases depending on how it's installed and in this case you don't have to space it away from other devices because it's already on the end here so plenty of extra space for ventilation there as these things do get warm when in use so that's it for this video until next time thanks for watching